What's up? How y'all doing, brothers and sisters? Today we're going to talk about the true history of Jesus, the Council of Nicaea. If you never heard of the Council of Nicaea, then it's going to be very informational to you, especially if you're a Christian. And this is some knowledge that we all should know. We shouldn't be scared of knowledge. So at the end of this video, what you will achieve is you will understand what the Council of Nicaea was and how did it impact the planet. It's very important stuff that if you don't know, you really need to stay tuned. So let's talk about the true history of Jesus, the Council of Nicaea. Now, before we can get into the Council of Nicaea, there are some other things we have to get into first leading up to the Council of Nicaea. There were several councils throughout history that the Roman Catholic Church conducted, but the Council of Nicaea is one of the most important councils because this particular council is the council that explains the origin of Jesus, this God that's called Jesus. So let's just learn a little bit everything that I'm about to show you. You can go and Google it and research it yourself. You don't have to believe nothing I'm saying. You can pull it up and go research and get all of this knowledge yourself. It's a fact. What I'm showing you now is not belief. So I'm just simply teaching you something here that we might not all be aware of. So please give me your attention. I beg that you do because this is very informational for you. So the true history of Jesus, the Council of Nicaea. Before we can get into the Council of Nicaea, like I was saying, there were several councils, but this one was the most important in the Christian church. Now, why we want to talk about the Council of Nicaea is because this council is the council that established Jesus on the planet of the earth. Now, before we can talk about the Council of Nicaea, let's talk about Serapis. Have you ever heard of Serapis before? Don't worry. If not, I will show you what Serapis is. So everyone need to stay tuned. We're going to get a lot of education in this video. So before we talk about the Council of Nicaea, let's start with Serapis. Everybody, what I want you to do is pay attention to the screen. If you go to Google and put in Serapis, this is what will come up. This is what will come up if you go to Google and put in Serapis. This is a brief video. You could go do the research yourself. I'm giving you all the resources right here. You don't have to believe it. You can know it, people. This is knowledge. This is history. Open your brain. Free yourself because only the truth can set us free. So now this is Serapis. If you go to Google and put in Serapis, this will pop up. You see this? This say Jesus. You see Jesus is in the middle. Jesus pops up when you put in Serapis. But let me explain to you what Serapis is. If you look at the, the images in front of you, if you look at the gods on the bottom left of your screen with the cups over them, a lot of people, if I had not told them that it was Serapis, they would say that's Jesus. But we'll get to that later. This right here is the Greek god Serapis. All right? Get familiar with this image. This the Greek god Serapis. Now this up here is Jesus. Don't they look similar? Don't both of them got a cup on their head? See, during this time, Jesus was called Serapis because there was no J on the planet. This was way before Yahweh and all of that stuff, Yahweh and all that. This was during the 300 to 400s during that time, roughly. So this was during the time of, of Constantine, and every Christian should know who Constantine is. Now, we're starting off with Serapis, right? You see the similarities between Jesus and Serapis. We'll get to that later. Okay, basically what Serapis was, see, Serapis was the name of Jesus in the, around about the years 300 to 400 A.D. roughly. But at the time, he only existed as a statue that was made by forced slave labor. See, people, when the first Europeans went into Africa, the first land they took over was Egypt. And they forced the pharaohs there, to, after they took the land over, to put these European pharaohs up on the throne. So that was the end of what you call black Egypt, when the black people ruled. When the white man took over, 
he put himself up on a throne and they forced the slaves, all of them African slaves over there, they forced them to make an image in honor of the first emperor that invaded Africa. So the first Im now we we talking we still talking about Serapis here. Keep the Serapis image in your mind because we're gonna get back to it later, and we're gonna explain why S Serapis and Jesus show so many similar features, even though they're different gods at different times in history. We'll get to that later. First, let me let me establish something. That Serapis, what you're looking at, this statue called Serapis, that's exactly what it was, people. It was simply a statue. It was a statue that the first European pharaohs forced the African slaves to make in their honor. So, when they, in other words, when they took over your land, they took your religion from you, too. So, what happened was, the emperor that was responsible for the army that took your land over had the slaves make a statue in his image. So this image that you looking at is actually a man called Ptolemy Soter. That's his name. This image of Serapis right here, this is a dude called Ptolemy Soter. And I can prove that to you. Just stay with me. Now, if you go to Google and put in Ptolemy Soter, this guy will pop up. What's so, what's so special about this? What's so special about this is, I just showed you the picture of Serapis and Jesus. Those are only statues. Now, those are Greek gods. Those are statues that people still believe in today. But well, we're going to get to that later. But what I'm pointing out is, this guy right here ain't no statue. Yeah, they got statues of him. But what I'm telling you is, the statues you're looking at of Serapis and uh, Jesus was made in the image of this guy. This guy right here was a real European emperor that invaded Africa. And when he took over Egypt, he forced the African slaves to make an image in his honor. And that image that was made in his honor by the African slaves was this right here. Serapis. I bet you none of y'all Christians never heard of Serapis. Tell me why this dude looked just like Jesus, but you ain't never heard of him. But he was he was now let's keep on going in his, and let's keep on going here. This is Ptolemy Soter. For all you Christians that know about salvation, in the church what they call salvation. Soteriology. You see that? Read that. Soteriology is the study of salvation. That's the study of how you get saved. And the name of it is Soteriology. Look at the first words in it. S-O-T-E-R. They named the study of salvation out to this dude, Ptolemy Soter. Look at his last name, Soter. Now look at that word, Soterology. That's the study of salvation. Why they didn't name it after Jesus? Why didn't they name the study of salvation after Jesus if Jesus was the one doing the saving? It ain't Jesus. It's this dude here who invaded Africa and then enforced the African people to make a statue in his image. and worship it. And then they forced the African slaves to worship this image. They forced them slaves to worship this image. When they went into Africa and invaded Africa, they forced them slaves to worship this image right here. And we still worshiping it today. Serapis. Or what you call Jesus. But now stay with me. Stay with me. It's a lot more to learn. See, because what I'm showing y'all is fact. This ain't no belief. This fact. You can go research this yourself. This ain't nothing you got to believe. This something that's knowledge. Ask your bishop. He went to theology school in college. He had to learn all this stuff. These folks know the truth. They getting rich off you believing the lie.
wake up. I hate to scare y'all, but it's the truth. This man named Serapis. Now, Serapis was a statue that this real emperor, when he invaded Africa, forced these African slaves to make. He forced them to make this statue. He forced them to make this statue right here called Serapis. Today we call it Jesus. And I'm going to show you why we call it Jesus today. Because it used to be called Serapis. I'm going to show you why that happened. If they didn't worship it, he put them to death on the cross. This the image that this dude made them African slaves make in his honor. Now this was a real white man that invaded Africa and he made these Africans make this image right here in his honor and forced them to worship it. Just stay with me. This is Ptolemy Soter. Now this is where the Christians get their word soteriology from, not from Jesus. Now Jesus is supposed to be doing the saving, but they going to name the study of salvation of saving after this dude. Now this dude really existed. You ain't got to believe that Ptolemy Soter existed. Look, he go a coin with his pic picture on it. If somebody in the future see a coin with George Washington face on it, they know that man existed. This a coin right here with the man face on it. Why ain't no coins nowhere with Jesus face on it? We talking about somebody who walked on water and everything. No statues, no grave site, no bones, nothing to prove his existence, so you just got to believe it. But we ain't got to believe in Ptolemy Soter. This where you get your word soteriology from. This, this dude, corn right here. This the dude who forced the African slaves to make an image in his honor. And then he forced them to worship it. Now the name of that image was Serapis. Today we call it Jesus, and I'm explain why. Now this is the picture back then after they took over our land. You can see the white man put himself on the throne. Look at the African slaves back there fanning them and everything. See back then all the Greek emperors called themselves Lord. That's why when you look at all them old movies, they be like Lord Hadrian. And Lord such and such, I report at your command. And Lord this. Back then, all of them called themselves Lord. So when you look at the Bible and you hear the word Lord, you don't know which Lord you're talking about. Now, I'm breaking some real knowledge down to y'all. Check this out. Now, here go a picture that they drew back in the day after they took over Egypt and stuff. You can see how they made us slaves and the white man on the throne. But now, let's move on. Go to uh, Google and put in Greco-Egypt God. Now, when you put in Greco-Egypt God, guess what's going to pop up? Serapis. This Serapis dude keep popping up all over the place. And don't he look like Jesus? If you listen to me, I'm going to free your mind. Get the knowledge. Don't deal with this belief. They got your fool. I'm trying to wake you up. Now go to Google and put in Greco-Egypt God. And you will see that. See what Greco mean is Greek. Egypt mean Egyptian. Now Egypt is in Africa. That's, the, that's, the, that's our land. That's black people land. Now, when it got took over by Europeans, it was called Greco-Egypt because the Greeks took it over. So the name of it became Greco-Egypt. And during that time, when the whites took it over and they made us slaves in Africa, they made us lose our religion. They took our religion from us and they made us make images of their leaders. They made us make statues of their great emperors. And they forced us to worship them statues. Now when you put in Greco-Egypt, this Serapis guy keep popping up. Because when the Greeks invaded Egypt, this was the god that they forced the Africans to create. They forced the Africans to make these graven images of this white man face called Serapis. And then they forced them to, to worship it. If they didn't worship it, they'll kill them. Now these are just some of the Greco-Egypt gods. Now look at here. Go put in Serapis. That's the same dude. Now this during the time when Ptolemy Soter invaded. That's how you get the Soteriology 
the study of salvation in the Christian church. Now listen to what I'm telling you. That's this dude. One of them Jesus and one of them Serapis. I give you a million dollars if you can tell me which one Jesus and which one Serapis. That's BS. Both of them the same God. That's what I'm telling y'all. Look at the cup on the head. They just changed the name of it. Now we finna get to how they changed the name of it to how we get to be calling it Jesus today. Stay with me. Look at this. Here go proof of what I'm saying. See, ain't no pastor gonna present no proof to you. He gonna get up there and hoop and holler and do all that shouting and running and carrying and on and all that crap and hooping and hollering, but he ain't gonna show no evidence to you. I'm showing evidence to you. You can go and research this yourself. This written in the books. This history. This where it really happened. But you know what they say? You, you want to hide something from black people, all you got to do is put it in the book. And boy, I swear they ain't lying. Only book y'all going to pick up is the Bible, and that's the book that got you trapped. But if you go and do the research, you'll see that you're trapped. Now look at this in front of your face. This Serapis, this proof of what I'm telling you, 3rd century BCE, Greco-Egyptian mythological god. We know the Greeks dealt with mythology. We know Jesus is a Greek god. What you think changed since then? What make you think they gods real now and actually existed? Zeus and none of them never existed. That was all mythology. That's why the Mexicans called Jesus Jesus. Because it's Zeus. It's a Greek god that don't exist. That's why you got to believe in it. Wake up. Now listen to the rappers. Read over here where they said in the corner. Read it. So rappers right here. Called the Christ. Trust us. Don't that sound like Jesus? Don't that sound like Jesus? But you ain't never heard of this guy before, have you? This was before Jesus. This Serapis, this who you worshiping. Don't look, was called Christ, the only begotten son. Holy Savior God, born of a virgin, redeemer of sin, resurrected believers. Ain't that what y'all saying in the church about Jesus? But you ain't never heard of this guy. Do your homework. Wake up, people. He was called a good shepherd, called the healer. Why well, don't hear none of these um, pastors saying, praise the rappers. Why well, ain't nobody saying, praise the rappers. This the same thing. This was before Jesus. This, they called Jesus the rappers before you call him Jesus today. Back in the day, his name was the rappers. Look. This all of the stuff that's Christians say about Jesus, but this all was before Jesus. So you can't say this is a copy. Yours got to be the copy because this before Jesus. Look at this. This BCE. This before Christ. This before Christ. So how can you say this is a copy? Yours must be the copy. So what I'm telling you is you worshiping Serapis right now. Now you calling it Jesus, but it's really Serapis, and I'm going to prove it to you. Stay with me. You worshiping these Greco-Egyptian gods, these Greek mythology, mythological gods, Zeus. That's what Jesus is. Hey, Zeus. That's Serapis, the underworld god. Everybody who worshiping Jesus, you're worshiping the devil. You're worshiping Ptolemy Sotel. This man right here, it was a statue. It wasn't no real man. It was forced on people. If it was a real man, they wouldn't have had to force all them African slaves to believe in it.
happening. We would have looked at the man and we wouldn't have to believe nothing. When people look at me, they ain't got to believe I'm standing there. They know I'm standing there. You got to believe in it because ain't no proof he existed. Ain't no proof. But we can prove that this Ptolemy dude existed. We got history that this dude existed, though, this Ptolemy dude, but we ain't got no history that this dude existed. So what I'm telling you is that this Ptolemy dude is the one who forced the Africans to make this statue. It wasn't a real person. People, you ain't got to believe in a real person. Nobody got to believe that Tupac existed. I can put his CD in now and I know that man lived on the planet. It's traces of him here. What I'm telling you is Ptolemy really existed. We ain't got to believe in Ptolemy, but y'all believe in Jesus. See, Ptolemy, the one forced the Africans to make this little statue called Jesus and then forced them to worship it. And these Africans still worshiping this statue today. And he existed before Jesus. See, look, B.C., this Greco-Egyptian mythological creature, this mythological God that y'all believe in so dearly, that was forced on people to believe. What kind of God got to come into existence that way? Now stay with me and let's free y'all mind. Look at this, pictures of Serapis and Jesus. You can't tell the difference. Look at this, which one is it, Serapis or Jesus? This is what I'm telling you. Now here is further proof of what I'm telling y'all. If you look up on the screen, this is a ladder, right? Now what this ladder is, is when this statue of Jesus was forced on the slaves, these slaves started worshiping this statue. That was our ancestors. They children started worshiping the, the statue. Then they children children started worshiping the statue. And over time of years of keep worshiping this statue, we got to up to calling it Jesus today, but I'm explaining to you why we call it Jesus now in the next picture. This next picture that we're going to see is a letter that was written later on during this time because there was confusion. The name of this statue was Serapis. But in another part of the, the continent, other people had carved their image of the statue. But with their image, they started calling it Jesus. So the Roman um, emperor who created the statue... was like, man, it's confusing. Some people calling it Jesus, and some people calling it Serapis. So the Roman church was like, man, that's too much confusion. We got to simplify this thing. So over time, this what happened. It became a problem. Now, this is a letter that, that uh, this dude named Hadrian Augustus Serviano. If you read the letter, you'll see what I'm talking about. In other words, this guy wrote a letter to the emperor saying, look here, man. Now these people up here calling the statue Jesus. Down there, they still calling it Serapis. What we going to do about this problem? Because now people starting to argue about what his name really going to be. Because, you know, people got different languages and stuff. So this dude wrote the emperor a letter, and this is what the letter say. I'm going to just read it to you real quick. Stay with me. So this is the letter that he wrote the emperor about Serapis, because what they found out was that it's too much confusion. Some people calling it Jesus, and some people calling it Serapis. So this dude wrote a letter to the emperor, and this is what he said. He said, from Hadrian Augustus, to Servianus the consul greeting the land of Egypt, the praises of which you have been recounting to me. My dear Servianus, I have found to be wholly light-minded, unstable, and blown about by every breath of rumor. Just stay with me here, people. He said, 
There those who worship Serapis are in fact Christians, and those who call themselves bishops of Christ are in fact devotees of Serapis. There is no chief of the Jewish synagogue, no Samaritan, no Christian presbyter who is not an astrologer, a soothsayer, soothsayer, or an anointer. So what he's saying, read the last line. He said, even the patriarch himself, when he comes to Egypt, is forced by some to worship Serapis. He said, this when the patriarch visited Egypt, he, he was even forced by, by some people to worship Serapis, by others to worship Christ. So you had a group of people going around saying, look, man, Serapis, the true image, because they got these Africans to create this image of, of this Ptolemy dude. Now, Ptolemy had died, but they were still worshiping this statue that was created in their Greek gods um, uh, image. They, these white people still was forcing them Africans to worship this statue that was made in their gods image, and it was called Serapis. But some land in another part of the land, they start calling it Jesus. So that caused confusion. And that's why this dude wrote this letter. And, you, and this letter is, and it, it, you could go pull it up. And we got proof that this dude existed. But you can't prove that nobody in the Bible existed. So stay with me and I'm going to show you what I'm trying to tell you here and free y'all mind. Now look, you read the letter yourself. Pause the screen and read it yourself and tell me what you get in it. Tell me what you get out of that letter. Them people was worshiping Christ, calling the statue Christ in one part, and they was calling it Serapis in another part. So you tell me who, who had the answer right if Serapis existed before Christ. I just showed you that Serapis was created in B.C. That's before Christ. So the people who were saying Serapis was correct, so y'all people who saying Christ, y'all really worshiping Serapis. Because Christ is just a copy of this Greek god Serapis. And I just told you who Serapis is. That's Ptolemy Sotep. That's Ptolemy Sotep. That's this dude. So he, he got us worshiping this statue of him today. We still worshiping this statue of this dude today. And here go the ladder that show where the confusion came and how we start calling it Jesus today. But at first it was called Serapis. Now look at this. This leading up to the council of Nicaea because what had happened was after all this confusion, when the emperor, see when the emperor got this ladder from, his, from this dude, he said we got to do something about this man. As the Roman church going to lose power. Because it's too much confusion. Because at first Rome had all of these Greek mythological gods. They had all of these gods. And it was too much division. So they made one god to bring their people together. To even be strong as Rome was. You had to get the people with one belief. It stopped with the people. So they created this Greco-Egyptian god, Serapis, and forced, put it, and forced it upon people. Now what kind of god going to be forced on people, man? So let, read this letter. This will show you that it, was, it started to be confusing. That they had to write the emperor and tell him, look, some people calling it Serapis and some people calling it Christ. Because it was called Serapis Crestus at first. But then they came and put the Jesus Christ and turned it into Jesus Crestus and then it became Jesus Christ today. So y'all still worshiping Serapis, y'all still worshiping this evil white European invader that invaded our ancestors, man. Remember they told you in the Bible that the gods split the sea on the Pharaoh and, and drowned them Egyptians? 
Well, black people, I got news for you. We the Egyptians that they talking about they drowned. So why y'all getting happy at church that our people was drowned? See, none of that happened. They telling you them people was evil and wicked. But this is what really happened, y'all. This the truth that they don't want y'all to see. This why Africa so messed up. Them people went over there to Egypt and forced them people to worship this God. And threw this God on our black people. And we still stuck worshiping this God today. Read this letter. You'll see how Serapis and Christ became confusing, and they had to write the doggone emperor, and the, and, the, and the latter eventually got up to the big emperor, which was Constantine in 325 A.D. Now, what's A.D.? That's after death. I just told you Serapis was B.C., That's before Christ. So this thing have been worshipped for years, man, and we still worshipping it today. Now later on, they still had confusion about this thing, just like we got confusion today. We never could get it right because it's a bunch of crap. Now them people had confusion and they had to write the emperor. Now... When they wrote the emperor, these letters eventually got up to Constantine. And that's how we ended up getting to the Council of Nicaea. Now let's get to the Council of Nicaea now that we got all that away, out the way. Now this man wrote this letter to the emperor and it went on up eventually to Constantine. And, because, and see, here go, if you never heard of Constantine, here he go right here. And here goes some coins right here that show that Constantine actually existed. Just like I just showed you Ptolemy's coins that he actually existed. See, I got proof that these dudes existed. And, and I got proof that these dudes existed. What a proof that, that Jesus existed. Why Jesus ain't on, ain't on no coin. He walked on water, turned water to wine, but people didn't even make a coin of him. Come on now, people worshipped him, right? Come on, they ain't make a coin of him. Now look, we got coins of Constantine and Ptolemy. Now here go Constantine. When he got, when the latter got up to Constantine, he called a council meeting. With all the Roman bishops of the Roman Catholic Church. Because if you don't know, Christianity started from the Roman Catholic Church. That's why they call it the Mother Church. Anything they put mother in front of is the forefront, like Mother Africa or Mother Earth, Mother Nature. So in Christianity, that's why I keep telling people all Christians are Catholics because all of y'all started from the Roman Catholic Church from these dudes right here. Now look what happened when he made this doggone statue, this graven image of God right here. When he made this statue that y'all worship and calling Jesus today, it was confusion in the land, just like it is today. He took people away from nature and put them into worshiping these statues and books like y'all doing today, like fools.